Hey everybody, it's Chris and we're back with something else Amiga. On the channel today we have my fourth Amiga 2000. The one with the ugly faceplate. Had a big old bubble butt thing with a You know the thing. Thing and I, $18 later, and I didn't 3D print it, this is a factory Commodore 380736-02 Amiga 2000 cover. This is the shortest video ever. Are you just doing a video of putting a cover plate in an Amiga 2000 so it looks like this? No. Today on the channel we're going to be testing out the Piccolo 64. This was kindly donated to the channel as non-working and I think I got it working. We're about to find out. Probably not. Okay, so I just spent the 18 seconds screwing that cover in so this Amiga 2000 looks like all of my other Amiga 2000s. This one has the RTG to HDMI on the 2000 video slot board and it works okay. This unit sports OS 3. something. Do you ever have a drawer full of stuff and you go to pull something out and it just ends up looking like this? <laughs> I like to use the mice with the just rubber and plastic and no metal, especially on the 2000. Remember it had the uh, RGB to HDMI so it takes a little bit to boot. It is currently 8:27 p.m. I do have the button on this one so I can set all those Nice options. And because I'm super lazy, I don't have a jack. I just plug the mini to a Raider HDMI cord and just ran it out the back. And it's always been that way. I didn't feel like reaching around and unplugging it from the monitor, so I just put it on a splitter. 314. In here is a Commodore A2065 Ethernet with a Expansion Systems Data Flyer IDE to IDE to CF with the 8 megabyte RAM expansion board. I have one Zorro 2 slot left. Now this network card, it's a 2065, so it has AUI or 10 base T. If you want to get it uh, on Ethernet, you're going to need one of these Centricom 210T twisted pair transceiver. It turns AUI to Ethernet. Now it's only 10 megabytes, so make sure your switch supports 10100 or 10100 10 gig, 20 gig, your mom gig. Ah. I have a separate small switch off of my main gig switch that does step down into the 10 slash 100. That's just for the Amiga fleet. And it has eight ports and I have 37 Amigas. It works out. Actually gonna remove the ethernet card. A little easier having the slot free. Just make sure you just toss your screws wherever. 2065 ethernet. Yep. In its place we're gonna put the piccolo and it has two connectors on it. I really don't know if it requires a custom cable like the GVP Spectrum. I think I've said this before. I don't know if this card even really works. What was wrong with this card was this. See that where it got mangled up? Well there was some slices across several of the traces and I went through and fixed them. First things first, I'm gonna fire it up. Double mouse button. What does double mouse button do on the Amiga? It lets you get to the early startup menu on Kickstart 3 or better. Hey, cool, we have a disabled board. Well, that's great. Pull the RAM board out, let's see what we get. This will work, it must be bumping into the address space. There we go, working, working, working. But I have no memory. Is this the same problem I had before where I had to put this extra jumper on it and knock it down into a weird address space because this Amiga is special? I lost my bag of jumpers. They're gone, they were in a little like, crack bag. Like, this crack bag, this isn't crack, this is silicone tubes. Okay, let's see if this works with all these cards in here. Four. One, two, three, four, okay. Got everything. This card, of all cards, blows out the 8 mega address space. I don't understand. Wait for the Raspberry Pi to boot for the 82nd time. What in the hell? Why does it do that? You know what, for SNGs, I am going to attach it. So, I'm going to move this to attached. Whole board. Slides onto here, and we'll see what happens. And I get a Zorro slot back. I don't think it's gonna do crap. I gotta find another memory solution, hold on. My memory solution is to remove the product that I'm trying to review for this video. Why? Because it worked fine without it. I'm gonna do this to copy Picasso 96 and all the junk over. See, I'm just like you guys. I have a nightmare of problems. I just make it look easier because I'm editing, but trust me, I sit here for freaking hours banging, banging the old bald spot against the wall to figure out what the heck's going on. With this card out, everything's groovy. There's my 8 megs of RAM, by the way. And load SMB mounter 
and grabbed Picasso 96 at 7 megahertz. So now that took 2 megs of RAM just to load my Annie. Now I'm going to load SMB mounter. And it just freaking crashed. Yeah, I need to run this one. This ain't my day. So it's like my 18th reboot. Alright, I think I got it to work. So we're going to wait for it to load. Hey. Well, never mind. Be right back. <laughs> I ain't got that. Damn it, do I have to take this all apart and put a freaking pie store in it? Just for the CPU portion of it. We're gonna go all balls out and slap a Super Turbo 28 in this mof and uh, watch it blow up. Let's see what happens now. Doesn't even work with the Super Turbo. It doesn't initialize. Weird as it does low high. To HDMI and we come to a black screen. Which is what, ladies and gentlemen? CPU! So, this thing is dead also! Fixed it with a Hofbrow. Because at one time I had a Pi Storm in here and I had an SMB mounter and all that stuff. And I forgot. This is 7 megahertz, so it sucks. You know what? I'm going to put this back in because I fixed the jumper that I already forgot about. And we'll see if it does the right address space. And failed. So, it is not the Zorro 2, Zorro 3 jumper. This board just hates it. Or this Amiga hates everything with this RAM combo. God. What is it? Same thing happened to the 386. Okay, that'll do. Four my address space. I could have had networking, but... F it. And we're going to install Picasso 96 right here. It is going to be slow because this is a freaking turd. Not my J. This just goes to show you what goes into a video and you realize you forgot to put in your accelerated CPU. Hi, welcome back. Crazy hour. It's 11.44 p.m. on a Sunday night. Anywho, I ended up putting my Pi Storm in here. I tried the Amiga Kit CPU adapter. That works, but it's got all these interrupt requests and stuff. So I finally pulled, they pulled, they pulled. Ow! That's not funny. I pulled this board out and everything decided, ouch, it's going to work. That really hurt. So, Pi Storm's in. All that crap up the top is Pi Storm stuff. I put the Kick 314 ROM on the Pi Storm. We are on the CPU riser cooker. These CPU riser card right down here, that big mess. That conglomerate of stuff you heard falling was all the chips for a repair that I have coming up. You know, board unidentified. It's all Pi Storm stuff. It's ROM, ROM, RAM, 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 RAM stuff. All right, I need to see now if I can install Picasso 96. Do we see the Piccolo after all this dang time? I don't read the manual. No, it doesn't see it. It doesn't see the Piccolo at all because it's a freaking pie storm. And there's no DMA. So I got my first slot and it says F you. Well, I guess I could virtualize my hard drives and make them type 76 images and do all that mess. Can't find any modes. Attach a board. No board because Pie Storm does not support the freaking. Damn it. Gem. It's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Anybody got an 030, 020 accelerator for an Amiga 2000 you want to get rid of so I can finish this video? So all Pi Storms are awesome. They're fast. Really runs great. 040. Getting some mad speed. This is a Pi 02W chip ram. Still going to be borked because they ain't fixed that ever. So, you know, it's rocking along 312 times faster than it was, or 236 times faster. We're rocking, but we almost got chip speed. Not really. No copy back, because it doesn't exist. But it does have the virtual FPU, MMU kind of thing emulated. And that's cool. Um, HD Toolbox, this was another one. I have to set it up for the Pi Storm. Uh, you got to change the device ID, so it's not SCSI.device. It's going to be uh, B... R C M dash S D H C dot device. Oops. Whoops. There we go. Alright, so we're gonna say save. That yeah, just locked up. Great! That's uh Amiga for you. Yeah, so we'll reboot it again. Anytime you make a hard drive change on the Pi Storm, 
It says, no thank you, sir. It says, read my coffee cup. This has got to be one of the worst videos I've ever done. <laughs> so let's try this again. There we go. But I can't change this. Why? Because remember my PyStorm EMU68 video? I said never do line one. So, I don't think this is going to work. It's never going to work. I'm going to carve out a Type 76 partition real quick. And if you haven't seen that, go watch that EMU68 uh, video. Okay, all done. Carved out a 2 gigabyte partition on this 16 gig card. I relocated the PyStorm stuff to a 250 meg boot partition. I didn't need 14 gigs for boot. All right, perfect. Partition drive, it's a two gig partition. So as I highlight the junk, delete, grab first one, slide it all the way over, name it, DH0, bootable. I'm giving it 300 buffers because we have 400 megs of RAM. Okay, we can do direct as a transfer too and save changes to drive and exit. I can stick this in WinUAE and mount this partition type and drag all my crap. Done, I'm cheating with the 3.2 MMU lib so I get the 040 drivers and all the MMU crap. Does it show, since I only have one card in here now and that is only the Piccolo, does it show it? No, 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 this is a waste of time. You wasted an entire evening doing nothing. You got nowhere, and you made a big mess with all of your parts everywhere. <laughs> hey, how's your weekend going? I totally wasted the entire time trying to polish a turd that couldn't polish. Now, I got the processor through the Pi Storm, but the damn Pi Storm doesn't support any freaking DMA, so my Zora buses don't work, and, you know, I got my one SCSI controller to work. The D, the, the, that thing, RAM board, no dice. Let's toss an Ethernet card in there for SMGs. Just to see if it works with that. I'm not even plugging in the transceiver. We're just hitting the button. Double mouse button. EV68 boots nice and fast. So I get a processor. RTG, RGB to HDMI does not. Alright. That'll come on because that's booting. What do you think we're going to get on the old boards library? Is the 2091 going to work? Freaking yes. Alright. Is that Piccolo just a piece of shit and doesn't work? What happens if I put this uh, Piccolo in with the Zoro card now? With with the memory card. Let's just totally bork our evening and drive ourselves nuts. Double mouse button again. What do we get now? Nothing. Now we... <laughs> All right, you get one card, one card alone. What a waste of a video. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is just a hint to you that uh, PyStorm EMU68, unless you're just an Amiga 500 running caffeine from Pedro and you just want to dick around with some games, rock on, man. But if you really need your stuff, like I want to use this machine minus that thing, that's my everything, that's the CPU, the RAM, the that's awesome. Don't get me wrong, this thing is epic. Um, cheap, you know, compared to like a GBP card or an 040. But I need to use my computer for what my computer was made to do. Why do you look so tired, Chris, all the time? Emotional damage! And just like that, we're back to where we were before we even started. So if you want to waste an entire evening doing something to your Amiga, feel free to take it apart, make a change, screw everything up. Have a nightmare of trying various hardwares and doing all sorts of magic to make it work. And, you know, it's it's 12.25 uh, a.m. in the morning, and i got to get up for work in a couple hours. And I've wasted the entire evening, but did I have fun doing it? Yeah, actually I did. I do this all the time, and I'm sure you guys do too. You have this inkling that you want to try something out or do something new, and you end up borking something, and the whole thing gets out of whack takes you hours to get back to where it was before you even started it. On one positive note out of this situation, I do have the normal faceplate cover on the 2000, so it will look better and not have that big borky PC cover on it. That just didn't look right. So, thank you guys for watching this useless video. I hope it was at least entertaining. And it's useless to me, and I should never even post it, but I think I'll post it because it's funny. Once again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.
I'm not going to say I hope you learned something because the only takeaway would be just leave your stuff alone. Have a great one. Funny, you bastard.